Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here, monitoring the risk for some isolated severe storms today. This is really going to be a hit or miss, and a lot of people are going to miss completely on most of the rain and severe weather, but there's still the risk for very isolated severe storms late this afternoon, and I'll explain. It's a really potent system, to be honest with you. We're pretty lucky because what's happening is the biggest piece of energy, which is the low, is actually heading up in this direction. And the other piece of energy, which is down here where the warm front is, is kind of moving off to the south. So you see this big area in between? That's what's heading towards the Carolinas. The only concern is you see this purple front. This is called an occluded front. It's basically where a warm front and a cold front kind of overrun. They merge into one front here. And that little occluded front right there, which I'm highlighting, is what could produce a line of scattered to isolated thunderstorms late today. But the key part is like it always is this time of year is you can have a ton of wind energy, right? A ton of fronts, a ton of lift and triggers and wind shear. But if you don't have instability, which is warm, humid air, you're not going to get storms. You need fuel. You can have a Ferrari engine, but if you don't have gas to put in it, it's completely useless. So that's the big question. How much of that fuel gets up here? And with all the clouds and light rain this morning, while it's pretty ugly, it's actually helping us out. It's keeping the severe weather risk away. But my concern is what happens if late, late this afternoon, let's say four or five o'clock, we get just some sun to come out and a little line of storms develops along that front as it pushes through. And that would be what would trigger an isolated severe storm or two. So I'm going to turn everything off real quickly. We're going to turn the day one severe weather outlook. And you can see up to the north where that one piece of energy is going, we've got a low and uh, even medium to higher risk. And again, I do think there is a small section up here, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, that could see supercells. And then down to the south where we are seeing severe weather this morning uh, in northern Florida, where there's a tornado watch in effect, that's the other area. in between big area of yellow, which is a low risk for severe storms. So let's get right to our future cast. All right. So we're going to start with the 8 a.m. model forecast. It's already after 8 a.m. It's 840. This is kind of an interesting thing to look at. Where is the model think storms should be right now and where are they in reality? This is what I do often. So we'll put the real radar up over top of the, the simulated radar. And you see that's the simulated radar. Let's put the real radar up. And if you look carefully, there's a lot of areas where you're seeing storms that aren't actually showing up on radar, like back in here. So most of this rain's already pushed east, and you're also seeing some storms in here that don't exist. So there's already some discrepancies, which is kind of a red flag that maybe the models are having a tough time, even the short range models handling what's happening this morning. So you got to stay up to date on this. So we go through the morning, nine o'clock, it kind of shows everything dissipating. But by the middle of the day, um, right around 11 a.m. to noon, it looks like a cluster of showers. And again, I don't expect these to be severe, but maybe some reintensification of rain. What I'm watching is down in here, and that's what really we need to focus on. What's happening back here? Because remember, what's happening here, this is that occluded front coming up from the south that could trigger. So this rain over us here in the middle of the day actually is a good thing because it stabilizes things and keeps the severe weather away. We go to about 2 o'clock, that rain lifts, and maybe... The sun begins to come out, but there's still light rain. So the more these lingering showers and clouds persist into the afternoon, this is three o'clock, by the way, the better the chance that we don't see any severe weather at all. So we'll go to four o'clock, go to five o'clock. Now it does look like at some point there's a break in the clouds. So what I'm watching is what happens with this line of showers and probably embedded thunderstorms right here. This to me looks to be the occluded front coming in. And again, this is five o'clock, so we're getting towards the late afternoon. Remember, sun doesn't set to almost eight o'clock now, so we've got plenty of sunlight still up. We get to about six o'clock. That line starts to intensify a little bit as it crosses over I-77, and then it moves to the northeast by seven o'clock. And this is where things get interesting. Is there enough instability for these storms to get severe? I'm not totally sold on it because this is the, the short range rapid refresh. Some of the other guidance doesn't show nearly the kind of robust storms here, but that's the one area. If there's going to be severe weather, it's going to be that line right there. And it develops right over the Piedmont and pushes northeast. And you can see if, if we're going to see severe weather, I think this is the area to watch. Iredell County, Rowan County, Cabarrus, Anson Stanley, Richmond, Chesterfield County, and then up towards the Triad and the Triangle. That would be the area I would watch for between 4 p.m. and about 9 p.m. for possibly some severe storms. And again, the main threat is damaging winds, but there could be an isolated tornado risk in there. Pushes out fairly quickly, and then that's it. It's all 
done. So that's it. That's the only risk of really severe weather is that one line that came through and I'll pause it right there. That's the only line we're watching. So let's take a look at some other parameters quickly. All right. So first things first, we'll look at the significant tornado parameter. Do we have ingredients for tornadoes? Not much through the first half of the day. Um, actually, let me let me pick the latest, latest run here. I was just looking at the, the, the run there. That's kind of a, a later one. So let's go back. You can see coming up this morning, not a lot, kind of stable. But that one line, remember that line that comes through late afternoon? Look at that. A little uptick from Charlotte East. So that's definitely a line to watch right there. Potentially some parameters there for an isolated tornado. So definitely got to keep an eye on that. But remember, rotation or significant tornado parameter doesn't always mean tornadoes. It definitely means the threat for some strong storms. And sometimes we get caught up in just tornado, tornado, tornado. Remember, damaging winds will be a big issue today if these storms get organized because there's so much wind energy in the atmosphere. Let's look at the uh, rotational tracks. I think this is a little better indication of where the storms that have a, a rotating updraft will develop. And we'll push it kind of through here. And you can see there's a couple lines here, and this is actually kind of interesting. You see this, this one right here going from Union County up towards the Triad. So there's a couple back here that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, certainly has my attention, these areas east of Charlotte um, this afternoon. We'll back it up here, and you know it's right around 5 o'clock, 6, 7, 8 o'clock. So yeah, there's, there's a couple really isolated in nature, but it's something we'll monitor closely this afternoon. So... Again, not a huge risk on a scale from like our one to four. I said we're like a 0 0.5. We, you hear this term a lot, and I'll say it yesterday, and I've seen the weather service say it. it's what we call a non-zero tornado or severe weather threat. It's not zero, but it's also incredibly low. And if we're going to get one, they'll be really isolated. So still pay attention to the weather, especially in that time frame after four o'clock today. But the first half of the day, I know it seems weird. You want to root for clouds and showers because that'll keep any risk of severe weather away. And overall, the rain risk, pretty low as most of it moves around us.